Hey, what's going on, guys? Crow Sama here, and today you're listening to the Crowcast. This is episode five. Um, yeah, it's actually it's going by pretty smooth. Uh, you know, not really too bad. Going pretty well. It is. Um, even though 2020 is uh, burning around us, you know, we're st- we are still here to provide you some good quality entertainment. Uh, and with me, which you just heard, is my co-host, Channel Two S. Second sound wave from Channel Two S. A lot of names. So <laughs> bored in quarantine that he's actually began painting his model kits. Mm. Oh, and there's some progress. So, uh, not much to talk about. And like, there's things to talk about, but it's like it still feels very slow in terms of announcements and just things that are going on. Uh, but yeah, we have a we have. A Bro, few we things. got like five kit announcements two days ago. What are you talking about? Uh, maybe I'm in the. Um, the minority. I just feel that it was a little bit lackluster on those announcements. Like I was literally got an expo's worth of reveals. True. That was like the same kind of stuff we would have seen if they had a Shizuoka or whatever this month. That's what we would have seen there. It's the yeah. same stuff. They just released it online. Maybe it's just the environment of which um they they announced it, like I guess it could be. Like yeah. it doesn't have the same hype behind it when it's not actually at a convention. Yeah, because, like, everything's on fire, so it's like, eh. It's like it's a kiss. Yep. But, I mean, hey, Bound Dock, like, that's pretty cool. We're finally getting one of the last suits we needed from Zeta Gundam, and it's massive, which mm-hmm. I had no idea was even a thing until I actually saw the pictures of it next to the Zeta Gundam. Yeah. You know, I I don't hate the kit, or oh, the suit in general, it just it's super weird like it's oh it is it's like weird. a xenomorph it is really weird it's probably one of the weirdest mm-hmm. suits from zeta gundam and zeta already has like some of the weirdest suits in gundam but what i'm really yeah Quibble. what i'm really hyped about with it and what has me really excited is not the bound dock itself but the fact that we're getting a bound dock opens up all these new possibilities because that thing mm-hmm. is basically a small mobile armor so now yeah. there's kind of a bit of a precedent for more of those kind of like mobile suits that are like right on the edge of being a mobile armor. So now we could get mm-hmm. stuff like maybe the Wadom, for example, that we normally think would be, you know, way too big to be a high grade. Well, if we're getting the bound dock, that opens up some more opportunities. I mean, definitely. Uh, I mean, they've, they've released a lot of different things that were either mobile armors or um, just like... Um, exo suits like from the double o series uh, in high grade form so i mean they, they definitely have the capabilities of doing, of doing all that yeah but it's good to see that they're like at least moving forward with doing some new ones and kind of keeping that idea al- keeping that I- sort of idea alive yeah absolutely but um before we get into all the uh the new kits announcements i definitely want to uh shout out new type hq.com for sponsoring you know us in this video um, they're doing some good stuff. The finals of the 30-minute mission build-off for the bracket challenge is actually almost concluded. Yes, by the time that, uh, by the time, actually not even by the time this pod goes, podcast goes up, by the time you start editing this podcast, um, we'll probably have a winner. Oh, yeah, because the finals is pretty much... It was today. Today is yeah, the finals. Yeah, so like I, I just voted for that. I think, I don't even, I don't even know if I voted for it this morning or last night. <laughs> But that was voted for. Yeah, there was like a full armor Gundam looking thing, and then like a diorama with a yeah. ring light at the bottom. Yeah, it's a, it's it, it's a pretty close one, man. Yeah, Some good builds. neither of those I would have guessed would have been the finalists, but uh, you you can never really tell when it comes to like community voted things like that. Yeah, I don't know how much I'll I'll, I'll have to go back and, and look at how much uh, percentage the judges um you know votes counted for. They count. Like, I don't know if it was for... like a thirty seventy or. 50 50 i think it was confusing but i think the way it worked was that i'm trying to remember it, it was convoluted but i think each each judge's vote counted as one and mm-hmm. then the audience vote counted as i think like two but split between the two proportionally based on how many votes they had like, if it was a 60-40 split, then one would get, like, 0. 0.6 and one would get 0. 0.4 or something like that. It was kind of it was kind of confusing. Um, yeah. But it was something along those lines. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, 
I know I know it was uh, discussed previously, and you know it's definitely um, you know organized fairly. Yeah. So I don't think there's any kind of um, I found the only you know, misjudging. The only on time that. the the community votes really came into play was in a few cases where the judges had a fifty fifty split. Um, in that case, mm-hmm. the the differences between the the audience votes was kind of what decided it. But in any case where there was a clear consensus by the judges. Unless, like, literally everyone in the community liked the other kit, it pretty much just went that way. And there was a few kits that I was like, it, it, it definitely didn't feel like that, because I would vote for something, and then the next round I'll see a completely different kit that got selected. I'm like, God damn. Yeah, I was really surprised how far that one that one Alto got that was just, like, a, like a super nice-looking, just, like, airbrushed build without, like, anything fancy done to it. The green one? Yeah, the green one that was just like the the quintessential, just really nice, clean looking build. Yeah, like it had some subtle shading. Um, I don't know if it had water slides, but it didn't have any like really advanced detailed painting. Nor I don't think it had weathering. Um, but it was still like a really good basic, you know, uh, airbrush, you know, kit. Yeah, it was a great example of like how to just do like the basics of like gumpla painting. I'm just given the given the other suits that it was up against. I'm really surprised it made it that far in the competition. Oh yeah, I think that was one of the kits I was looking at. I'm like, mm. I was like maybe everyone else voted for it, and um, you know. They, I mean, I it literally made it into about. final four. Oh yeah, it did, huh? It's in the losers bracket right now for third place. Hmm. Well, I mean, more power, you know, if. if People really did like it. Yeah, I'm not. Awesome. I'm not knocking at all. I'm just saying that, like, knowing the general people's kind of general tastes and like the style of kits that we were seeing in other people's submissions, I thought it was really surprising that something that like simple and basic would make it that far in the competition. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, though, we had like a really good pool of uh, really well built kits. Quite a lot of variety. There were a few that I thought looked pretty good. I just wish they had like slightly better pictures of them to show them off. Yeah, and, and that's to include um, the finalists, the um, the like the diorama with the light circle. Yeah, I I can it's, kind can't really tell what's going on with a lot of it because it, it the pictures are like pulled out really far from it. Mm. I don't know. Like, maybe I they know have some close ups. Yes, like, I'm gonna look at it again. There. Because you can see a lot of it, like it's very subtle, but you can see there's weathering and there's a lot of uh, details on the on those kits. Just can't really make out much of it. Yeah, I'm gonna go look. I'm gonna look at it right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's pretty cool. Um, I'm not like the posing on the the Porta Nova space type isn't like super interesting or exciting, mm-hmm. but uh, it's not bad at all. I mean, there's some cool stuff going on with diorama. I like the sort of the under ring lighting going on there. Yeah, that's what. But yeah, my all these at first. All these pictures of it are like full frame images, so you can't really see a lot of the a lot of the finer details in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he should do like one really good close up, and then you know the other two could have been more uh, wider shots. Yeah, and like I'm looking at that full armor Gundam looking one now too, and it's a really cool build, and I like it a lot. But out of the, there were like probably like five or six that I would have guessed would have made it into the finals, and this was, this was only one of them. So I'm kind of surprised that of all the, of all the builds we got, these are the ones that people chose. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm not like knocking the people that made these. These are some great looking builds, but I just find it interesting that these, like the, I guess more the, the way that people voted, for the ones I like. I think it's interesting how it turned out. It, it wasn't quite what I expected. I already had kind of an idea in my head of not only the ones that I liked, not only the ones that I wanted to see win, but the ones that I kind of suspected would win based off of how I thought other people would vote. Yeah. I thought the one, I think it's in the loser's bracket, but the one that says, like, the touch. Oh, yeah, the, the like, kind of sort of samurai-looking thing with the grass base. Yeah, like, that one's probably my favorite. That's a pretty cool one. It wasn't my favorite favorite, but there definitely is a lot of really good craftsmanship in that one. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, it was completely original. Like, you know, that, yeah. that's what I was really looking forward to, is something original and not based on a Gundam. <laughs> right. 
But, you know, like I said, everyone did really good. Um, I don't know who's going to win by, you know, by the time this comes up. Um, but we'll we'll see when those uh when the announcement comes out. You want to make any predictions right now? Yeah, um, I'm going to just go with the Thunderbolt uh, because the pitcher is way more clear. And I think that's what people are, are probably voting for, just because they know what they're seeing. Yeah, I think so too. Because I I believe they mentioned in the in the description for the contest that they're kind of weighing both the photography and the the piece itself as kind of a collective so i yeah. definitely kept that in mind when i was voting and kind of looked for kits that were not ne- not just well made but also really well photographed mm-hmm. even the stands like they were saying that uh the stands or like the base diorama all that's going to be taken to a, uh, account as well but it's not like its own category yeah so it's yeah, so like we'll if you had a goes. diorama build, and this actually happened at the the build con back in November last year. Uh-huh. Um, they had a, a build that had a diorama, and it, the diorama was okay, um, and the kits were like okay built, but it was not better than just a kit that was very well painted without right. any stand or base or anything. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Quality over Sorry. quantity. Yeah, it's like. Don't don't be banking on those dioramas just because it is a diorama. Like you gotta you gotta make sure everything's um you know all accounted for and and well built. It's better to keep your scope scope small and focus on something you can do really well than try to overextend yourself and maybe not push yourself to your limits. Mm-hmm. Yep. Start small. That's why I haven't done any of that diorama shit yet because I'm like I'm still working on the basics. So we kind of trailed off halfway through a through a new type plug, so we should probably finish that. Yeah, <laughs> um, but simply, yeah. If if, if you uh, want to get some paints, you want to get some tools, supplies, kits, please go over to newtypehq.com. Uh, check out their supply. Some things are kind of selling out a little bit more than others, uh, especially when it comes to new kits. Only for the fact that you know people are uh, indoors right now and they want to preoccupy their time. So if you can, just keep on that keep watching the page and if there's anything that comes up you know try and snag it as fast as you can and you can also use promo code krosama or or channel 2s channel, yep channel 2s uh for 10 percent off yes you can and now that we're done with the world's longest sponsor plug um what should <laughs> we talk about for our main topic tonight crow oh for the main topic uh i'm i'm going to pretty much say it's going to be Let's put it as the new kits that were announced. Uh, that could be the main topic. Um, but before we get into the main topic, we got uh, maybe one little small topic we could talk about. Uh, that being, mm, what, do you, what do you want to talk about? Um, why don't we talk about Maxi Boost On, since it's an awesome game we're both hyped for, and you actually had a chance to play around a little bit with it yesterday because they had an open beta test. Oh, absolutely. Um uh, yeah, they. I think it was like what, a eight hour or ten hour uh, time frame you had to play. I believe it was around ten hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I didn't get a chance to play the full time frame because um, when I think it was, I, f- I forgot where I was able to play. Um, I guess the Pacific was the first like round, um, but I got to jump on and it was around. Oh, it was like super late. Was it ten a.m. I mean, at 10 a.m., uh, 10 p.m., so it was already super late, and I played until about 3 a.m., uh, so I got, like, good, a good five or so hours in, but the game is, is super smooth, fantastic, significantly better than Versus in, like, every way, uh, and I think it's just the way that the game controls. Uh, it doesn't feel sluggish or, or slow like Versus did. Um, it's pretty fast-paced. The roster is immense. I think it's, like, over 200. It is definitely over 200, although... To be fair, there are like thirty suits that yeah, are just clones. So, mm-hmm. Zeta, you know, the Zaku had Zeta, Ruluka yeah, and the like Zeta fillers. Gundam, the Heine Destiny stuff like that. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of uh, redundant stuff. Um, I, I I would like to see how different the uh, Double O Quant and the Double O Quant Full Saber is. Like how different they are. They um, are. I've I, seen some gameplay of uh, both Maxi Boost and Two, and they are definitely quite different from each other. There's not a lot of overlap in their move sets. 
That's good. Um, because I was pretty good with Quant back in the day, but uh, I think I might switch over to full uh, Saber just to try it out. Honestly, I don't even know if there's something you would necessarily switch from one of the other two. Like, from what I saw of them, they kind of look like two completely different characters in their play styles. Well, that's what I'm saying, um, because I like playing with Quant. Uh, It was, like, one of my good um, distance characters. You know, just throw those funnels out every chance I get and kind of keep my distance. But with Full Saber, I could be a completely melee-oriented fighter. Yeah, I mean... Full Saber, I think, has some good range stuff as well. I haven't I haven't looked at it in a while, but I remember it being pretty decent all around. Mm-hmm. One of those, like, kind of... I don't know if it was, like, like S-tier high, but, like, pretty top-ranking suits that, like, a lot of the high-level players would use. It's probably... I know Strike was um, one of the top tiers for a while. Uh, Regular Strike I mean, Strike back when, like, full, uh, Maxi Boost was, like, first in the arcades. Like, many uh, maybe. moons ago. I mostly see a lot. I see a lot of Double Ariser. I see a lot of Reborn's Gundam, um, a Master Gundam, Master Gundam. Yeah, mm-hmm. like a lot of it's now. This is just based off of like watching like people's like highlight reels on YouTube and stuff. So uh, that's not a great sample size. But just off of what I've seen, I would say those are like mm-hmm. the really top tier ones that a lot of people use. Um, yeah, uh, I wish I could remember what people were playing back when I was uh, in the arcades. Uh, I know Red Frame was a big one. There's a lot of Red Frames out there. Oh, I can't wait to play Red Frame. Red Frame's my baby. Well, well which one? You got like three different ones to choose from. Yes. <laughs> I, would, I would assume you probably go Tactical Arms. Tactical Arms looks really cool. I definitely want to try it out. Um, I had some fun with, with Red Dragon when I played it in full boost. Um, I really mm-hmm. liked playing, honestly, just the regular Red Frame as well okay. um he's just got some really fun moves i like his his like special uh, special melee and i think it's his special shooting he has like these different he has like all of his like special moves are just different ways to start a melee combo mm-hmm. so he's really fun to play with then you get the uh the powered arms for your special yeah i don't like the powered arms the I- it's like it gives you a little bit it, i mean like the it doesn't first of all it doesn't change anything about the way the suit plays it plays exactly the same it's just a cosmetic mm-hmm. change that yeah i guess you could argue is technically makes you worse because you're a bigger target once you have the te- once you have the powered arms on if you really want to get like super technical and meta with it but mm-hmm. i just don't like how the i just don't like its finisher the big sort of thing yeah. i think it's really yeah. hard to actually land and it's cumbersome, and it leaves you vulnerable, and I don't like it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you are playing against competent players, then yeah. But um, if, you're, if your opponent is not that you know, good and precise, then hitting him with that giant-ass katana across the, the arena, if, it, it's pretty satisfying. Yeah, and like the horizontal sweep's pretty good for that, but the vertical one is like, that's a... I've always had a lot of trouble landing that. Yeah. Uh, um, I tried Age One, and I can honestly say I was not happy with the the overall. I don't know, like control setup for it. Like, well, I don't it's know, like man. The strike uh, Gundam, right? It's designed so that you yeah. have like three different loadouts, and you can switch between them on the fly. Yeah, and I didn't get a big chance to uh, to really explore the Spalo as well as the Titus. Um, Spalo seemed like the most. Um, Agile one, like obviously, that would uh, make I really sense. liked it. Um, doesn't have much. Kind of has like a, a dash move, and then it has its a uh, range, which is throws throws a dagger, and uh, its melee is pretty pretty fast, pretty in and out. Titus, on the other hand, is very slow, obviously, uh, but very powerful. Um, ha- throws rocks. <laughs> Don't Zaku. Yeah. I don't know. So uh, does it have? I this- guess- do they have the same property as the Donzaku's rocks where you can use them to block beams? I don't think so. Because you have the basic uh, range ones, which is just a square button. Uh, and then there's a special, which you, you, big, you pick up a giant boulder. Um, oh, like so I, the, I didn't really uh, explore that in terms okay, of like, that's blocking. Okay, like that sounds kind of like the gun cannon in some of the older versus games. Y- yeah. like Well, I think the, yeah, the gun cannon did throw one. So it's the same, yeah, yeah basically. Okay, cool. 
See, I haven't seen a lot of Age 1 gameplay, so I don't really know what to expect from it. I don't, I don't mean... I can see why. It's not... It doesn't feel good. Like, I was not really thrilled playing as Age 1, even though Age 1 Normal was my favorite mobile suit. Um, I didn't get the satisfaction, but when I went to uh, Age FX and Age 2... I was thrilled, especially H2. Um, really, really, really good ranged uh, mobile suit. Yeah, I saw you having some fun with that. It looked really cool. Mm -hmm. I, I was, was also kind of surprised that you seemed to be. I was a little. I now I did come in kind of near the end of the stream, but I was surprised to see that you were you were you were playing a lot more like kind of classic suits than some of the new additions. Yeah, like I'm not into all those new crazy mobile suits. Um, really, I, I like to keep it, you know, normal. But whenever the game actually go comes out proper, I'll do some like analysis videos, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll lose some online matches, uh, you know, while practicing with other suits, just to, you know, show what the suit is capable of in a video. No, I mean that's see, I'm like kind of the other way around. We're like. Those are the first suits I will go to, and probably most of the ones that I will play. Because, like, mm -hmm. that's the whole appeal to it, is the fact that it has, like, 90 more suits than Full Boost did. Yeah. But those 90 suits are... They're, they're either alts of previous suits, like, you know, Seven Swords, uh, Full Saber, um, the Zaku Head, Zeta. It's, like, it's things that I'm not really too interested in, because I, I have my Exia, and I'm like... I don't really need. I don't need Avalanche. I got Exia. Um, well, I, really I think Avalanche wanted... was actually in uh, full boost, but it was DLC. Oh yeah, yeah. If, if it was DLC, I didn't touch it. Okay, that would make sense because like Seven Sword, Avalanche, those were in DLC. Oh, okay. um, I'm watching. So I'm watching some Age One gameplay right now, and the Spello actually looks really good. He's got like it yeah. looks like he has some sort of like dashing, like special yeah. move. That, like, yeah, that was the R two. Covers a lot um, of ground. Like a, yeah, it's like a quick dash. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm probably, I'm still gonna stick to my main roster. Like, if I really go online to do ranked, um, I'm I'm gonna stick to my main roster, which is Blue Boy. Um, I'll probably pick up H2 as my one of my mains. Uh, X2, that's one of my mains, which I'm fantastic with. Um, who else I'm really good with? Exia. So yeah, I'll, I'll stick with those. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna pull up. I'm pulling up the roster right now just to kind of refresh my memory as to what what's in the game here. And like, there's stuff like like you were saying, it's like a lot of variants and stuff. But I mean, there's stuff like the Gabsley, there's the Boundock, there's mm -hmm. the uh, the Octoga. We got the Gedlav. That looks super fun with like the wheel. Mm -hmm. You got the it's Rising Gun. There's a lot of suits that I don't even like in general. Like, just not even a part of the game. I just don't like their designs, the aesthetics. Um, or I'm just not that interested in, but like I mentioned, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll pick it up if I do a video, like a little analysis video, uh, much like I did with the Gundam Battle Gunpa Warfare uh, mobile suits. Uh, just try them out, see what their bread and butter is, and uh, you know, j just have fun. And maybe at that point, I can learn to love it because there has been mobile suits in the past that I've played with them on a video game or. Um, seen them in a different form of media, and I absolutely love them. Um, oh, all the time, absolutely. That's that's a big factor for me too. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, the Savior Gundam, the uh, the one from the the crappy Canadian from made Destiny, TV yeah. show. Um, yeah, I forgot yeah. where I seen that one. I think it might have been the PS2 game, uh, but I seen it and I was like, that is ugly. But I'm actually I actually like it now. I would like the G Savior. If it had more detail on the exposed frame. Yeah, you just gotta do some scribing, I guess. <laughs> if the or, arm or... if the upper arms and upper legs looked like actual mobile suit frame and not just like sticks, mm -hmm. that would be great. But they're honestly they're way past the point of scribing. You would have to like scratch build new arms and legs for that thing because it's not just that they're lacking in detail. They do not look like they're part of a machine. It looks like someone just took a couple toothpicks and just stuck them in the shoulders and then stuck forearms to them. Yeah, that's true. They'd really, if they just bulked up a little bit, had some like you know hydraulics and stuff on them, I think it would actually look pretty cool. Mm hmm. Like some Iron Blood Orphans type style. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm hmm. 
I'll yeah. tell you what, though. Um, I really want to see what the Ardeos is all about in Maxi Boost because in Full Boost, it was kind of trash. But in this game, they've actually bumped it up by two cost brackets. So there's got to be some serious buffs going on with it, and I want to see what that's like. So wait, it's a, it's a 2,000? It's a 2,500 now. Oh, okay. It used to be a 1,000 cost. Mm -hmm. So there's clearly oh. some cool stuff going on there, and I definitely want to see what that's about. It could be interesting, because um, I, th I think Blue Destiny was actually a 1,000 uh, cost. No, I think it was 2,000. It was 2,000 full boost. Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, oh, I really want to... Yeah, it was. I want to try out Arios. I want to try out the uh, the Goof Ignited. That looks pretty mm -hmm. fun. Akatsuki, I didn't really enjoy that much in Next Plus, but I might give it a try again anyways. Um, I mean, they got the Tier and Tazoe. They got the Zabanya. That's one I really want to try. Yeah, um, the good old good. good old fence. Yep. <laughs> like beam fence post. Yes, that's that's gonna be really fun for like long range, like uh, like kind of stage management and stuff. Mm -hmm. Farzio looks looks like it could be interesting. Um, I actually really want to try the G self. I think that's got some kind of cool stuff going on with it. You know what, G self, um, the atmospheric pack was fantastic to play with. Um, it's it's. It feels more melee oriented, um, but it has some really good combos with uh, with its melee. Yeah, I've seen some play with it. It looks really fun. Mm -hmm. And of course, Barbatos, Barbatos Lupus, Barbatos Rex. Obviously, those are going to be super hype. Yeah. So is is Rex confirmed? Yeah, Rex is going to be a pre order bonus, I believe. Okay, I I, I gotta get on that pre order because I'm yeah I'm, I want a main Rex. And the other two DLCs they've announced are the Zaku Amazing and the Montero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Zaku Amazing looks pretty good. Looks like a good melee suit. Yeah, I'd try it. I'm probably going to get all the DLC anyways, just because I'm, I'm one of those people that just has to have all the characters for their fighting game. So even if there's oh. DLCs that I don't like, I'll probably get them anyways. Yeah, but the Versus series is notorious for having, like, so many different DLCs and are, like, what, 3 or $5 a pop? Well, if they turn out to be, like, actual trash or, like, really stupid clone characters maybe not but like the good ones i'll get mm -hmm. like it'll hurt but i'll do it yeah if, if it's from like a, a different series altogether like how gun um i think it was from the versus series like well, not versus series but uh from gundam versus on ps4 i think that's they didn't have any age kits in the main roster but they had some dlc for it yeah, and actually with a, with the uh, versus PS4, like they had some really good DLC suits. Like they had the Pale Rider, they had the uh, the Pixie, some really oh, yeah, cool yeah, choices yeah. that we'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. And I'm really hoping we see the Pale Rider again as DLC for this one. Yeah, I'll definitely get it for Pale Rider. Um, but yeah, like I'm interested in playing the Bale. Um, it looks, mm -hmm. it looks like it's one of those suits that is designed for a very specific abnormal play style, but if you play it in that specific manner, it's really good. Yeah, he kicked my ass. <laughs> I think it was definitely before you came on, because it was like one of the beginning matches. But yeah, I got my ass kicked a little bit by him. Yeah, it's one of those suits where it's kind of awkward to use if you don't know how to use it, but once you figure out how to use it, it's just devastatingly powerful. Mm-hmm. What's the... Um... There's only like a handful of uh, F91 kits, not kits, but suits. What's the uh, what's the black one? Oh, that's the uh, that is the Bergagiros, I believe it's called. Yeah, that. So that's one of my main ones back in the day. Uh, it, it used to be a thousand cost. I don't know if it's, if it's still a thousand. I think it still is. Let me. Ch I'll check while you're talking. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that one is like oh, it's so fun to use, and it's very versatile. Like you could really be more of a range uh, kind of suit, or if you want to go in and do some uh, melee damage, he has like a stunner with his um, with the uh, lance, and you can stun your enemy. You could just land a whole bunch of good uh, melee combos. Oh yeah, I think my favorite, I think my favorite stun moves in the game are. The Zeta Gundam's one where he just throws his beam rifle because it's super easy to just throw out and you can just spam it, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, another favorite of mine is the uh, the Gato's Gelgoog because you have, like, I think he has, like, two different options for throwing his Naginata, and they're both really fun. Mm -hmm. 
so yeah, like there's some great there's some great suits in this game, and like I could we could I could go on for like two more hours talking about the stuff I want to play in this, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that I'm hyped and leave it at that. Actually, wait, no, uh, Crow, how excited are you to play the Ghost Gundam from Crossbone? Oh, uh, you mean wait, Ghost is in it? I thought, yeah, I Phantom or is. Phantom Phantom Gundam? Yeah. Oh, same thing, yeah, different um, color. I didn't get a chance to play with him uh, last night, but I am pretty hyped just from seeing um, all the different dogfight. Um, like the different uh, battles online on on YouTube, it looks amazing. I uh, love the like the full burst mode when it has all the purple effects and everything. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's one we need a kit of. Yeah, like I'm all over that. Um, I kind of want to try the camp for too, since it's been a while since that's been in a versus game. Um, mm-hmm. As well as just like my old classics that I always go to, like the Gundam Alex, which I have so much fun with, just because the super armor is. I think a little bit too good for a thousand cost suit, but that's mm-hmm. just me. Well, you can definitely play, and you just gotta get your PS4. Yeah, and I'm, I decided I am definitely gonna get one anyways because I can just when the PS5 comes out, I can just trade it in, so it's not like it's not like it's a giant waste of money or anything. Yeah, exactly. And someone um, commented on our last podcast. Yes, uh, but and clarified my confusion about whether or not it was going to be backwards compatible. Turns out it is, but some of the games are going to get enhanced. Yeah, so kind of like the PS4 Pro. Yeah, which is fine. I think that's a, <clears throat> that's perfectly fine. So, yeah, I'm going to get a PS4 to play uh, Maxi Boost this year, and then when the 5 comes out, I'm just going to trade it in. Perfect. We can do some online uh, collab battles. I'm pretty sure a lot of people will enjoy seeing that over uh, Gundam Battle, Gundam Warfare. With my terrible, terrible internet. Rolling just into a quick announcement before we get into the uh, the main topic. Um, been doing the theme months, and so far I've been pretty good. Uh, the first one being February with LBX month. Um, was was okay. It, it didn't spark a huge amount of interest, but I think um, it got a lot of people into uh, LBX. Um, then came March, cool. which was 30-minute missions. Unfortunately, I was in a transit from the United States to Japan, and a lot of craziness uh, started occurring. Um, so that month was kind of like a bust. And then this month, for Zoids month, has actually been really good. Um, this has been the best month since, I want to say, you no, know, either October or November in terms of like stats. Um, just because the past few months has not been that great uh, in terms of numbers. But... Yeah, I love Zoids now. I'm a huge fan. I'm, I'm going to try and keep building them as I go along. But come next month is going to be uh, my dual month. So uh, basically I have my own personal month of, of a theme, which is going to be Mega Man. Um, that's, that's, that's a beautiful pun. I couldn't pass that up. Um, and then the other one, which is actually a members selected uh, month, is going to be Vintage Month. Yes. So kits that are like 2001 and older. Uh, you can build those. So I, I was looking online in a thesaurus for some synonyms for old that begin with <laughs> M so I could come up with a clever pun, and the best I was able to get was Mature May. So, you know, it doesn't really work that well. Yeah, it sounds like a porno. Like, <laughs> Sounds like a porn star more than anything. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. But. Uh, I, don't think that's, I don't think that's the direction you wanted to go with that theme. So we're just going to stick to yeah, the old Gunpla. Really- um and that's just where it's gonna go. Mm-hmm. So anything uh, yeah, uh, pre two thousand one, so like old master grades, old wing kits, old G Gundam kits. Mm-hmm. Now, um, there's a there's not too many Gundam kits I have that I'm going to uh, build for that month. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna turn the turn my head to look. Uh, so Gundam wise. Okay, I have uh, the 1 in 100 new Gundam, which comes with, like, a bunch of metal parts. Oh, that's like, going to be a cool know. one. That's a really neat kit. Yeah, it's it's a complete blank slate. Like, it's it's a canvas. I can do whatever I want to it because everything's, like, white. Um, so I'm going to... It's unbelievable how good that kit is considering when it came out. Oh, it is good? That You built it, didn't you? Or was it Kakarot? Um, that was Kakarot. But, like, the stuff they did okay. with it was like unheard of in anything other than that kit for like eight years after it was made oh really yeah it's, it's weird that there's like all these like screws and everything into it i'm like what the hell it had an opening cockpit it had die cast parts 
Like, even the box art for oh, it's okay. awesome. Hmm. I'm very interested. Yeah, that's a super cool kit. Um, as for, like, vintage kits that I have here, um, I got a few. Um, and I could probably find myself building the Serpent Custom, um, the 1-100. Mm -hmm. But that's probably all I'm going to do for that month. Oh, that's vintage fine. Vintage-wise. I mean, one kit is better than none. Yeah, I mean, I got a Zulidia. I could do two, but... I don't feel like building that right now, so it's probably just going to be the Serpent. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I do have a... I mean, I have a large uh, roster of things that are old, like just 2001 and older kits. Um, but definitely the 1-100 New Gundam, um, I'm, I'm going to build that one. That was actually provided to me by uh, Hobby Link Japan. Oh, nice. They uh, they wanted to support the month, so they sent me that. And... Um, I I also have another Gundam which is the uh, G Savior. I did not realize that is a 2001 kit. That's why the cutoff's 2001 instead of 2000, isn't it? That's one of the reasons. The main reason is I have a 2001 Bandai Mazinger kit. Really? You ch you changed the rules for Mazinger? I did. Of all the guys, I, I like Mazinger. Could... I don't know shit about it, but that this kit, this Mazinger kit from two thousand one, is one of the only kits that I can recall building in my youth. Because I remember I had a job where I used to hand out uh, flyers, and I saved up enough money to go down to the hobby shop and pick up that Mazinger kit. They must have not had a very good selection of kits. I mean, they had Gundams, but I, I think. During that particular era in my life, I wasn't big into Gundam anymore because it was post-wing. It was like, I think it was around when um, Seed was coming out, and I just was super un uninterested in Gundam. But like, I was super interested in, because I, I had a Mach 5, I had that. I think I had a couple of other Super Robot um, kits, but the Mazinger is the one I, I actually like remember. Okay, okay. So it's something you got, like, a nostalgic childhood attachment to. Mm-hmm. And that one, I'm actually... I don't ever do this. This is not really a uh, a type of build I do, but I'm going to do a as, as high of a gloss build as I can on that Mazinger. So, like, a super shiny metallic sort of look? Yep. I would like to see that. Um, I've... I've wanted to try something like that, but I've heard they're really tough to do because, like, any little imperfections and screw-ups become really, really obvious when you put, like, a shiny coat over it. Mm-hmm. So I've been kind of scared to try something like that. But you know what? I've got a, I've been doing a lot more painting lately. I've got a lot more time to paint, so a lot more uh, opportunities to try something that's outside of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Paint that, uh, that serpent. Um... I will if I'm assuming I'm done with the Big Nagina uh, soon enough to get to it. Because mm -hmm. I want to paint that. I want to paint oh. the uh, the Origin Gundam. And now that I'm looking at my mm -hmm. Revive RX-78, I kind of want to, I kind of want to do a Revive RX-78 that's not in that kind of gross seafoam green color. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I realized when I was putting it next to the Uniqlo Gundam and the Origin Gundam that they they use like this really weird off white for it, and it's kind of ugly. Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes Bandai cannot do that off white very well. Like I don't mind like slightly different shades of white, but when it's green like that, it just looks really gross. It's like slightly spoiled mm -hmm. milk. Yeah, the only times I've I've really seen them get it right is like on the RGs. That was good. Like, on, yeah, yeah, but like um like you mentioned on the um, that one kit, it's. That, like, greenish tint is just really bad. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's why I don't like the original GM. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, those those old ones, the old uh, UC kits? Yeah, like the, like, the, I the, I think the 0079 all of them had that color. gym. Yeah. But uh, that's because of the line art. A lot of the line arts had that uh, green tint to them. Yeah, and it was a mistake then, too. <laughs> this guy should have been fired. Uh, yes, but instead they uh, kept hiring him, and he actually made some good designs, so I can't fault him too much for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Okawara did the, the GM, right? Like, the original GM? Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that's what I thought. That was Okawara. So, yeah, he did some he did some good stuff. That just wasn't one of his stronger works. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I feel like they didn't do uh, line arts or the colors to uh, a lot of these kits in the line arts uh, correctly until, personally, I would say double O. Because even Seed has some very questionable colors. I've heard that in the particular case of 0079, and this might be a rumor, this might just be total BS, um, so do please fact check this for me. Um, not necessarily you, Crow, even just if you're watching this, um, but what I've heard is that because original Gundam, the original Mobile Suit Gundam anime, was a pretty low-budget show, they intentionally used kind of weird off colors so they could get the paint cheaper to make the to do the animation and they could use like the weird off colors that they had a surplus of already that's what i've heard at least that that seems about right because i mean the show was not financially sound no it was not um and there was actually i don't remember who it was i think it was like some japanese tv channel that made a really a really good documentary about the production process of that original anime, and you can actually find it on mm-hmm. YouTube. I strongly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah, that one came out late last year. Yes. Like, that it was one. around like November, December. Yep, something like that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that's correct, though. Yep. I mean, so we're doing Mature Mega Man May. Um, mm hmm. As we call it, mature mega. <laughs> oh, that's definitely a porno. <sighs> but you, you should get a Mega Man kit. I don't like, like Mega Man. I know. Though. You don't like Mega Man? No. How dare you? He's just a blue guy with a gun arm, and his games are hard and stupid. How dare you talk that way about the blue bomber? I've literally played every single one of his games, and I didn't like a single one of them. You need, re- you need to just redo it. Replay all of them again. I have them all like on it. my computer right now, and I don't even know why. I think I, the only reason I didn't uninstall them is because they are only like 20 megabytes a piece, so it wasn't worth the trouble. I've never heard so much blasphemy in one one sitting. It's a it's a good franchise. It's it's. Mm. I'm not going to say it's a dead franchise, but it's like knocking on death's door. Um, but it's, it's solid, man. And the kits... I've never built one, but I'm assuming they're good. You're really going to white knight a line this hard that you haven't even built a kit for? Yep. Because it looks good. I've heard I've heard good things about the Mega Man X one. Then you got Zero coming out next month. Like, okay, Mega Man X visually looks kind of cool. Like, I like, I like that. I think I saw, like, this, like, like really cool like die cast figure of him once that was kind of neat mm-hmm. but i don't like him enough to build a kotobukiya kit of him like that's not i don't have well, that kind of love for mega man i, I mean I, I get it um i, I would i would say well you, okay so you, you don't even like the original right you just no the original X is, is like the, the worst you really of them to me like it's just another like stupid bullshit hard nes game and they made 11 of them for some reason well yeah it's not counting the spinoffs yeah like just in the original series and then there's like six x games and then there's like the n64 one and there's battle network and it just keeps going and going and going and to be fair i haven't played battle network and i haven't played the n64 one but i doubt i'd enjoy them much more Legends, I, people will beat their dicks over. I have, and I don't know why. It's to me. I play Legends, and I hated it. I absolutely hated Legends. I hated the way Mega Man looked in Legends. I hated Roll. I hated Tron. I hated all of them. But uh, Exe uh, Battle Network, fantastic. Like I highly recommend it. I might give it a try. But I it, yeah, it's on. Uh, it started off on Game Boy Advance. Um, I haven't played the DS versions. I really just stuck with what I knew, and that was the Advance uh, Battle Networks, and they are amazing. See, I only ever remember seeing it on GameCube. Uh, that was va- That was like really, really different. Okay. Um, That's what I. That game is yeah, the one I'll, that I think of when I think of Battle Network. Okay. It has that generic cover art of both. Um, I forgot the kid's name. It, I bet it was Lan. 
Yeah, yeah. I bet it was that fucking. One. I'm, if it was fucking land, then I'll be. I'm, I'm gonna be pissed because they use the same three letters of all these, these like you know anime characters: ban, lan, uh, van. It's like fucking. There's more than three letter names that you can choose. Yeah, but only there's only two letters that are common between those names, Crow. But it's still it, it's it's still the same. It's different, but the same. In fact, technically, when they're written out in Japanese, there's only one letter that's shared between them because the vowel is combined with a consonant. So it's just the, the N at the end that's shared. Oh, well, yeah, but... Oh, yeah, because... If they're writing it in katakana. Yeah, oh. Or hiragana. Yeah. Ah, I can't find the damn kid's name. But I'm, I'm almost... Almost one hundred percent sure it's it's land because it makes sense if it's if it's land because like a land wire. Yeah, like you know it's all like are. you know Mega Man EXE. It's all like computer puns and stuff. Hmm. But I'll look it up later. Fuck it. But yeah. Um. So outside of that, I mean, the Vintage Month is gonna be pretty cool. I do have a Mach Five uh, that came out. in... 2001, once again, like a lot of things I own in my in my backlog is 2001, um, but I'm I'm thinking about building it. A what? A Mach 5. Oh, a Mach 5. Yeah, yeah, you showed me that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, though. I'm, I, might, I might put that to the side, because for the month, I, 100% what I have planned is the Mazinger, the New Gundam, the Savior, and the uh, Mega Man Zero. So I have those. If I if I get to Mega Man X, I'm I'm gonna straight build it. But for my Zinger new um, Savior and Zero, I'm painting all four of those. So I, I I probably won't have any time to you know really get to anything else. Okay. Yeah, like I said earlier, I'll probably just do the Serpent Custom, um, assuming I'm done with the Vigna Gina by then, and we'll see we'll see how mm. that goes. Um, it's coming along fine. Um, I did discover a a very large hair running across the collar immediately after I painted it, so you know that was fun. Ooh, gonna have to sand that down and redo it. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, it's coming along okay. But um, I'm gonna definitely not gonna have it done by the end of the month, but sometime mid mid May probably. Okay, yeah, that's not too far. Yeah, yeah, it's I, it's doable. I'd say like a couple weeks. I mean, at least you're painting again, or for the first all, time. yeah. And this is the only time I'm ever going to use rattle cans. Like, I've, I've already bought an airbrush. Mm-hmm. I'm just waiting for it to arrive, and then from here on out, it's going to be just airbrush. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, Cheaper uh, paint, more options. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because not only that, you can do mix and match. So if you want to, like, make whatever tone red that you're using... If you want to make it darker, you can add like a little bit of black to it. Or if you want to make it lighter, you can add some white or whatever other colors you want to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It is fucking land. It is land. Okay, that's what I th- I was I thought that that sounded like even if I don't know the franchise, that sounded like the name a kid character from a show called Mega Man Battle Network with a character named Mega Man <laughs> EXE would exactly. have. Like that sounds I like fucking hate. I hate either it. you made it up, and like you happen to be exactly <laughs> right. Or you actually were right, and I apologize for just bumping the table there. That probably came through the mic really bad. Oh, I didn't hear it. It might have picked. It but might no, have just like, picked I up. I tapped on my into side. a nostalgia memory to try and figure out his fucking name. Then I, I went online. Sure enough, this little fucker's name is Lan. And then Van is um, from Zoids. Okay. And uh, what was it? Stan was like the other one or something. No. And then there's Ban, I think it's Ban, which is an LBX. Oh. And then there's, um, I think, another Van in um, Zoids. I thought you already said there was a Van in Zoids. There's two. Oh, like... I think... Uh, that, like, different no, iterations no, 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 of the bit. same character, so, or... No, 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 So, Van is in Chaotic Century, and then Bit was uh, New Century. I, I kind of got those confused. Okay. So there's only one van. But there's a, a van, a ban, and a land. 
All right, so. You know, well, for some of those kids' shows, sometimes they want to they keep the name short and simple. You know, you got to go with, like, Lan or, uh, you know, JoJo, just something, like, short and easy to remember. But at least JoJo's unique. Like, yeah, like, but he specifically chose in the it entire to, anime universe to is sound called JoJo. foreign, but also be, like, super easy to remember. Mm-hmm. Fan is just a horrible name. Like, Lan... Land is okay because it's you know, it's a little pun. Yeah, it's it's know, not a bad little, pun. Little like, wire. It makes sense given the context of the show, and it actually sounds like a name that a person could have. Yeah, it's like but a, it's, chaotic it's like his name was Ian, but no someone saw it in lowercase and got confused. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what else is there to talk about? We got the new kid announcements. I mean, we kind of already talked about those. We talked a little bit about the Bound Dock. But yeah, I guess we could we could talk about, I don't know, like the uh, Hajiroboshi or whatever it's called, the IBO kit. Yeah, the one that we have no idea of the app game, if it even is coming out. It's already come out. What? It's been out for you like sure? months, I think. That's not a new game. Mm. It might even have been out for a full year by now. I'm, I'm it was just it only on I'm the Japanese gonna... app store, so no one cared about it. Well, I can I can download Japanese games. It's called uh, Iron Blooded Orphans, like Uder Hunt or something like that. Okay, oh, I gotta, <coughs> gotta download a uh, new software real quick. But um, the kit itself looks okay. I don't I don't really know what to say about it. I don't really want to judge the kit at this point because everything we've seen is very obviously like some kind of CG render and. Given mm-hmm. the fact that it's an IBO kit, it's obviously going to have really shit color separation. So I feel like you shouldn't even be judging it or deciding anything about it until you see like the Dengeki hobby snap build images of it to go off of. Well, I'm, I'm talking about pure uh, aesthetics. Because like obviously, if it has like color, you know, poor color separation stickers, um, to me it only busts it down a few pegs because that just means I, I get the paint. Um, I know for some people it's like eh, you're kind of breaking don't really up want there. To paint like yellow. Your call, the call's breaking up a bit. I heard like four words out of the last like minute. Oh, I was saying um, so I was just judging it based on aesthetics because uh, when it comes to color separation and you know heavy stickers, uh, for some people like I don't really see it too much as like a big con because that just means I paint it. But I know for a lot of people, no one really wants to paint white or yellow because those are like horrible colors to paint yeah and just when it's kind of like a mediocre kit or something super basic having to put that level of work into it's kind of just like when it's like just borderline already that's kind of enough to be off-putting you know Mm -hmm. like if i see a kit that's like really super cool but it just needs a little bit of touch-up work like absolutely i'll do that but if it's a kit where i'm i'm like "Eh, i guess it looks okay like i'm not gonna put in the work to pick up Bandai Slack and do all the remaining color separation. Like, that's just not... Like, a lot of kids just aren't worth that. Yeah. Um. So it turns out that Iron Blood Orphans game is not out. It's still on a pre-order status. Really? Or pre register Because they announced status. that, like, a year ago. The video I made where the t- I talked about the announcement of that was, like, almost a year, full year ago. So that thing has yeah, been it's... in development hell for a while. Yeah, I mean, I just pre-registered for it. Um, let me see if I'm, I'm going to go to the website and see if there's anything on the uh, on the release. But no, I don't, even, I don't even see a release date on the main page. It's weird. I don't even know. I don't even know what the gameplay of this game is. I mean, it's a mobile game. I doubt it's going to be particularly gripping. It could. It could be like a tactical uh, RPG I guess. kind of game. I guess. Um, I, I feel like their main draw and where they're putting most of their budget is into the animated cutscenes. Because um, mm-hmm. that was like a big advertising point, and that's probably where a lot of their money is going to go, so I wouldn't expect too much from the actual gameplay itself. Mm-hmm. I mean, neither am I, but... I'm, I'm expecting just some, like, I'm, I'm... really basic kind of sprite-based combat, sort of like you see in Fake Grand Order, and that, like, that sort of level of, of gameplay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully it's not, like, 
I don't know. Personally, I would not want it to be like Gundam Battle Gump Warfare. Cause I don't think it's going to be like that because like... there's it. They can't really turn it into like a collecting game because there's only so many suits in it. Like it's it's just IBO. True. You know, there's not. It's not really mm-hmm. meant to be like a huge crossover project. So they're probably just gonna have a you know a few suits you can choose from. There's me some like a story mode. They're gonna find some way to monetize it with microtransactions because it's a mobile game and it's just gonna get. It's going to get forgotten about in, like, a year, except for the, you know, compilations of cutscenes that'll get posted all over YouTube or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the the Japanese mobile market, um, or I, I guess, like, mobile interest is completely different than the Western mobile interest. It's like all gacha. We, we kind of like more puzzle games-ish, like, something that's simple, quick, pick-up, play. But Japan, it seems like they're they're a little bit more of like um, the technical side. Really? Yeah, like a, a lot of the games I see that are like exclusive to, to uh, Japan is kind of like um, it's basically RPGs, but it's a lot of like touch screen RPGs. Like you do like a lot of uh, combos, but touching the screen and stuff. Because um, I'll, I'll see it with people playing it on uh, games on the train, and I'll see what they're doing uh, on their phones. Cause I'm just a nosy person. Yeah, but they're like doing all these swipings and craziness on their phone. And I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? Yep. Like, I mean, I, I guess I could see that being appealing. Um, I guess, I yeah. mean, we don't have a lot of games like that in the U.S. web shop, at least. I don't know. Maybe we do. I don't really, I never look in the Play Store for games. That's not really a thing that crosses my mind just because I never play games on my phone. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know what? That's not true. I do play games on my phone because I have a uh, a GBA emulator on it, which is the greatest thing ever. And to be totally honest, um, I know uh, Pokemon Company is completely blinded by the success of Pokemon Go, but uh, if they were to just port the old GBA generation Pokemon games to uh, mobile devices, they could make Mm -hmm. a metric fuck ton of money because I would buy every single version of them easily without a second thought. Uh. I would love to be I mean, able to. That official- would work. I can already play them on my phone on emulator, but if there was like an official way to just play those games on the go, I would. Yeah, actually, yeah, because because the only the only reason I would want um, a new version, not not necessarily a new version, but like a uh, a ported version of the GBA or DS games, is if they can connect to um, Pokemon Home or to any of the uh, newer games. Sure. Because I w- I want to. I want to trade over what I, you know, catch. Yeah, and that would make it way easier than doing it the normal way, especially for the GBA ones, because it's kind of a process to get those over to uh, over to something that can actually use home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because home is already on the phone, so it shouldn't be hard just to connect to it. Probably not, no. Because you, you, you would probably be able to um, select home, um, and you, you go on the Pokemon Home app, and then it would ask to, uh, for you to select a game. Uh, to import from and you can say hey i want to import from emerald and whatever is in your inbox on emerald can be transferred over simple yeah but they're not gonna do that no so uh because that would take away from pokemon masters yep. and uh um, pokemon, pokemon go, go of course quite frankly it kind of seems like and they're already shutting down it seems like they're treating the uh the mainline games, like, they don't want to distract from Pokemon Go and Pokemon Masters, but uh, that's a conversation for another time. So, uh, I guess getting back I don't know on what track, the numbers are. I guess getting back yeah, on... Like, I don't know what the numbers are for Master, but it's definitely not... Because uh, they already shut down Pokemon Duel, and they're about to shut down Shuffle. Yeah, so it's it's probably not Go level, but just to get back on track, we were talking about the, uh, the new IBO Gundam and how it tied into the game and designs and stuff. Um, I think it looks fine. I'm not super excited for it, but if it, the color separation is not terrible, I'll probably pick one up. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, same boat. So um, I kind of want to give it the uh, the mace that the Lupus has, like not not Lupus Rex, but the regular Lupus. The uh, the cricket bat looking one. Yeah, I, I think I think it it can use that weapon. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, that is kind of like the coolest Barbatos weapon, or one of them, I would say easily. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah. I would say one kit that I'm really liking the look of is the Anima Rise Gundam. Eh. I like the aesthetic of it. I like seeing a uh, a planet armor or a planet style armor that's not just one color. It's got like some nice variety to it cosmetically. 
Mm-hmm. I like the new core. Um, I like that option set they made for it with the black thrusters. I think it's all around a really solid looking set. Yeah, uh, definitely the core itself is is pretty awesome, but I haven't been won over by the uh, planets uh, for it. I think they're cool. Um, mm. But anyways, we also got stuff like the Fumina, which is like the what fourth, fifth time they've tried to make a Fumina, and they still haven't yeah. gotten well, it right. Well, this is the uh, second like different mold for Fumina. The rest has been like the same mold, just with different armor. Winning Fumina, I think, was a new mold. No, the winning Fumina, I'm pretty sure, it was the same mold, just the different armor. I think they changed the mold. I'm gonna look it up right now. Look- I'm pretty sure that winning Fumina was okay. a new mold, and they still screwed it up. Cause that face looked almost exactly the same. No, it wasn't. They did. They the face was one of the biggest things they changed. They just didn't manage to not make it look creepy. Because hmm. um, winning was a, a P Bandai, wasn't it? Winning was not P Bandai. However, there was a P Bandai version that was, I think, it was the Command Fumina. I believe was the P Bandai one. Oh, and that used the update. Yeah, yeah, that right, used the right. updated sculpt from the Winning Fumina. Okay. But I. Bo- All right. So this this would be the the third. The updated, third updated uh, sculpt. Yes. Although it could be fourth because they did the Labo, and then they did the um the bust of her. So we've gotten mm-hmm. quite a few models of Fumina. Do you think this is going to be the uh, the winning one? I do not think this will be the winning Fumina because, uh, well, it does make some improvements to the body proportions and sculpt, um, and I like how they have like alternate parts for the jacket and stuff. The face just doesn't look right. Uh, proportionally, it looks off. It kind of looks like kind of looks more like Fumina fan art than actually Fumina herself. Um, and I'm just not into that. Mm-hmm. It's not... I mean, as a, I will say, though, to their credit, it doesn't look creepy. It just looks badly drawn. I think it's the best way mm-hmm. to describe it. Like, someone drew yeah, Fumina, it, and they got the proportions just a little bit wrong on the face, and it doesn't look creepy. It just looks not quite like Fumina. Mm-hmm. Is I could definitely say it doesn't look interesting. <laughs> Not really, no. Um, but that's been, I don't know, that's the main thing I've seen uh, people post about is the new Fumina. So it's its definitely gotten a lot of people's attention. And uh, I don't know. It, it's probably something that I i may get. It's its like 20% maybe. But uh, as of right now, it, it's, it's something I'm not truly interested in. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of people are going to feel that way about it. Um, I, it's not a mm-hmm. kit that at least I personally have seen a lot of hype for. Um, in fact, yeah. when I did a Gumpla News on this this article or this like batch of mm-hmm. this batch of reveals, literally no one is talking about the Fumina. Hmm. It's all about the IBO kit, all about the Bound Dock. Yeah. Although my I fandom, didn't want to talk about that. My one. audience does seem to be very very IBO heavy, so that could be a part of it. Well, that's like every audience. Yeah, but I've noticed that any time I make a video that has IBO in the title, it gets like five times as many views. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, when I was uh, streaming um, uh, Maxi Boost last night, like people were super hyped when Barbatos came on, but it's like when I used another suit, they were kind of like, meh. But Barbatos, people got hyped. Yeah, I mean... To be fair though, Barbatos does look fun as hell to play in that game. So like, even even though I'm not a like a massive IBO fan, it was still pretty awesome to watch it fight. Hmm. It's fun to play with. Oh, I can't wait! I I can't wait to play all the Barbatoses in that game. Hmm. <sighs> uh. So what other announcements do we have? I know we had a new Haro. Obviously, there was the uh, the Red Frame Master Grade with the Flight Unit. Oh yeah, that P Bandai, which I am going, I'm, I'm going to pre-order it. Yeah, I have to. I I want to, but I also kind of don't want to because it's like, after shipping, it's like ninety bucks. Ooh, because it's seventy seven, yes. and then it's ten to ship it because you can't combine the shipping with the way the P Bandai shop works. Even though I already have a pre-order that's coming out in the same month as this one, I can't combine those orders, so I'm going to have to pay shipping again for it. So that's ten dollars. And then state hmm. 
sales tax is going to be enough to bring that up from 87 to 90. So that's basically a $90 master grade for a kit that, yeah, that's, that's... while it is pretty awesome, and I love the red frame, it sure as hell isn't 90 bucks good. No, that's like... Even even seventies pretty damn steep because it just comes it with really the flight is. pack and that's a fifty dollar kit. That is a fifty dollar kit yeah. that they're selling for seventy five. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty damn steep. Yeah, because it... even the um the full saber quant that's like forty to fifty bucks. N- that one's that one's a little that one's fifty five I think, and even then that's kind of steep well, for it for what it is. Well, well, I was I was I was kind of more talking about over here because um, I've seen it on the shelf for forty. Yes, because well, yes, a lot of stores marked it down because they couldn't sell it, but the MSRP is stupid high on it. It's like twenty five oh, okay. bucks over the normal quanta. Oh shit! Yeah, okay. it's like fifty five hundred six thousand yen. Hmm. And all the stores in Japan have it marked down because they can't get rid of them because no one wants them, but they're also really expensive. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want it all right, but I already have two quants. <laughs> Well, you better make it a trilogy. That's true. Now you'll have yeah. one symmetrical quant and then the full saber quant. You no, know, I already have a full saber quant, but it's, it's from the the Chinese, um, like little side kit. Oh, like an add-on for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess in that case, you wouldn't really need the Bandai one. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's probably better build but I might quality, still get but. It. Yeah, if you already have an upgrade for it, it's probably not really necessary. Yeah. We'll see. I might, because what I've been doing is um, getting rid of a lot of uh, built kits that I have. And uh, I even bought some of those kits again, just like unbuilt. And then I'm going to repaint them, uh, especially the age kits. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm thinking of actually doing that with the RX 78 Revive, um, as I might have. I don't remember if I mentioned it before the podcast or in the beginning, but. I don't like the the weird green they used for it, so I'm gonna get another one at some point and paint it in an actual proper white. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Um. Or or you could just take that kit. Um. Uh, the well, it's a cheap enough kit that you could just rebuy it. Yeah, I'd rather rebuy it. Like he's got his V fins a little bit broken. Um. He's got like mm. crappy Gundam marker paint on some parts of him. He's already been panel lined. Like there's a. It would be more work to get this into a paintable condition than it would be to just start with a new kit. And like you said, mm. since it's only like a ten dollar kit, I might as well. Yeah, I mean, you could probably find it for less than ten dollars at this point. Um, maybe not. Maybe in Japan I could, but not in the U.S. Oh, okay. In the well, U.S. it's like ten, twelve, shipping. yeah, and shipping. In mm. Japan, I could probably get it for eight or something. Oh, probably less than that. Um, like, maybe. I could probably get it for, like, five. Actually, yeah, you probably could. <laughs> oh, trust me. I've bought so many Gundam kits that are just, like, five bucks. Like, a lot of the age kits. I bought those for, like, six, seven dollars. That sounds about right. <laughs> hey, if the, the stores don't want them, I'll, I'll take all the duplicates. Like one day the world is gonna come to a realization that Gundam Age is actually a good series and it actually has good kits, and you'll be like, "There's no more. Bandai's not making anymore." And I'm like, "Fool!" You'll have cornered the market. Like, yep. One thousand dollars for a Genoese. After society collapses, our economy is gonna be based around age kits. <laughs> I'll fucking rule the world with an iron fist and a fat wallet. Now, there's one thing I did want to just briefly talk about. Um, I posted on the uh, the Discord, but those, like, insect-killing, like, bug-killer girls. Oh, yeah. I, do, I, I saw you posting about that. I didn't really get what that was, like, a reference to. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> so, I I was uh, searching up Kotobukiya stuff online, um, like, on Mandarak, and I was just, like, really curious as to what the fuck is on... Um, like what does Kotobukiya have and I saw these little girls and I, I remember seeing them in the past but I was like yeah this little fucking girl is weird but I saw the price tag and they're like 15 18 dollars I'm like ooh, I was like for a Kotobukiya kit that's actually cheap so did some exploring and they're actually pretty damn cool um I guess from the game that they come from on PS2 it's 
you battle bugs, but they also like battle themselves. It's kind of like a a pre Frame Arms Girl thing. Okay, it's a pretty old game. So I saw these. But, um, I actually saw a post in the the news channel also on your Discord that apparently there's this new Kotobuki line that's going to be like kind of like Frame Arms Girls or Megami Device, but they're just like regular school girls. Yeah, um, that was, I know that was at the Shizuoka. Um, Last year, okay. So those or, are something oh, they've, Winterfest? they've had in the works for a while. Yeah, like I, I've seen the the prototypes at uh, I think it was Winterfest last year, um, but it, it was it was it looked good. Um, they're gonna be really customizable with um, the sideline. I think it's wave the little like, uh, handguns and all that. Okay. Yeah. So th- there's already a whole thing of customizable stuff for. What I think they're like one in twelve scale, uh, Plamo girls. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. So, there's like I'm, those I'm uh, little armory them, kits. You know. Those little armory kits that uh, I think Max Factory does, I believe, or Good Smile Company. Max Factory, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then of course there's the, the forbidden toys that go with Dragon Dress Sophia. Oh, Sky Tube. I still need to make a video on them because I have like the one that has like the multiple uh, dildos and the handcuffs, uh, one that's like a fucking guillotine. Well, I mean, mature mace coming up. That is true. <laughs> He's going straight to the porn hub. <sighs> well, only we can top that. So <laughs> yeah, on that note, let's uh, let's close out for the night. Yep. All right, well, um, definitely appreciate you for coming on. Uh, you know, really, really mundane topics, but I think uh, you know we got a lot of uh, good interest. Yeah, of, I might uh, have topics. to. I might have to prepare some fun stuff for us to talk about next week. Um, bring some interesting yeah, topics we, to the table just to shake it up a bit. Unless mm-hmm. there's something like really exciting to talk about. Yeah, just news has been kind of all over the place. Like we'll get a whole bunch of kits announced, but that's. It's it for like a week, and then next few weeks is going to be pretty bo- uh, boring. Well, that's just Gunpla news in general, Crow. That's the story of my life. <laughs> True. There's a week of well, hopefully excitement, some new and stuff then like comes three out. weeks of nothing. All right, well, uh, I'll I'll keep my, my brain racking, trying to uh, brainstorm some different topics, and uh, yeah, we'll come back next week. Yeah, yeah, I think that'll be cool. So, uh, I'm Second Soundwave. Uh, at channel 2s i'm assuming there'll be a link to it in the description or something uh that's on youtube yep. go subscribe to me there i do gumpla news uh other gundam gumpla stuff yeah and i'm Krosama, uh a bird yeah, that's it yeah see see you guys later take care guys <laughs> that might be Bye. the worst outro i've ever done for a video yeah <laughs> that's, that's like that's at the top and if it's not at the top it's really high up there <laughs>